Well, hello everyone. Time to start um, the urinary system. So now we're on to chapter 20 in the urinary system. Now a quick overview is just that the urinary system is um, a way to, to clean and uh, filter our body fluids, mainly through the blood. But uh, as it says here, a major part of homeostasis and maintaining the composition, pH, and volume of body fluids within normal limits. Remember this word right here, pH, is all about those hydrogen ions. Okay, and so it's just reminding you of that. The urinary system removes metabolic wastes, uh, which are just the breakdown of, of the reactions that you're going through. Remember, uh, metabolism is the sum of all the chemical reactions. Um, and the substances present in excess, uh, including foreign substances like drugs and their toxic metabolites. Um, various breakdown things. So the urinary system consists of the kidneys, which we will look at in the microscopic form soon, uh, all the little major microscopic functioning elements. The ureters, which are what transport the urine uh, from the kidneys to this thing called the urinary bladder. And the urinary bladder is going to, as it says, collect and store the urine. And finally, when it is time to go, uh, we will look at how the, uh, this tube called the urethra is going to be what takes the urine out of your body. Now remember, there's only one urethra, and you can always, uh, I had a professor that kind of would remind me, there's only one first and there's only one A. So there are two of these guys that we looked at called ureters but there's only one urethra and the urethra is the word that has a in it so you can remember it's the first and there's only one first now this picture kind of just sees a an overview of things this uh, these are the kidneys here right and so the kidneys as they produce urine they're gonna transport that urine down these things called ureters and there is two of them one for each kidney uh, it, those go down into this storage area called the urinary bladder. Remember, the urinary bladder is lined with transitional epithelium. That is important. And then we have the one tube that is taking the fluid out, and that is the urethra. Also, I just want to point out that um, we will look, the adrenal glands are on top of the kidneys, and uh, the word, this little prefix ad means above, so adrenal, so adrenal means above the kidneys. The other thing is uh, the right kidney is always going to be lower than the left kidney and that's because there's this big organ right here called the liver that pushes that down so, and that's another important thing to know. So like on this x-ray you will see you're looking at it in a mirror image because you can tell that this is going to be lower uh, than the other one so this is going to be the right side uh, because of that liver. Now the kidneys are reddish brown, uh, as it says they are bean shaped. Again, that should be as no surprise since then we have things called kidney beans. Um, in the adult, it's about 12 inches long, about 5 centimeters wide, and 3 uh, centimeters thick. Um, again, not going to give you those dimensions, just want to give you an idea of it. Um, it's enclosed in a tight, or in a tough, fibrous capsule. This capsule um, we will we'll kind of look at, but it is a very tough fibrous capsule. Another thing about the kidneys, and some people have um, heard this before, and if you if you had it made uh, learning those um, different membranes from 210 a little bit easier because they are considered retroperitoneal. Retro that word retro means behind, so it's behind the peritoneum. Uh, so um, if you had heard that before, which some people had, uh, it was easy to remember that the peritoneum is the lining uh, or the membranes of the abdominal cavity. Um, so the kidneys, uh, like I said, this one talks about how the left kidney is going to be slightly higher than the right kidney, uh, simply because of the, the right kidney is going to be pushed down by that liver. And there is a lot of adipose tissue that's going to surround the kidneys. Um, again, pretty much anything we're talking about, the kidneys, throw that word renal in front of it and you'll be doing well. Um, so it's got this very tough protective uh, um, makeup, even though it's not taking part of the peritoneum. 
So now this slide is looking at the structures inside. Um, now uh, the, the renal sinus, uh, we can't really see uh, on most of these pictures because it's going to be full with different things. Uh, but the renal sinus is going to be a hollow area if I was able to remove stuff like this renal pelvis, which we will talk about in a minute. There's a little hollow opening, a sinus. Uh, which is the scientific word for it. And so if we don't know what something is, we slap the word renal in front of it and tell what it is. So the renal sinus is simply an area uh, that's a hollow opening inside the kidneys, but it has structures in it. Now this next one called a helum, if I was to draw, which I doubt I'll be able to do a good one, this little kidney bean, you know, and you got a black eyed pea or a kidney bean, whatever you want to say, there's a little dark spot there. That little indentation uh, where things are going to come and then things are going to go, uh, this is going to be the helum. This is the entrance to basically um, the kidneys. Um, so inside the renal sinus, I'm going to have uh, a lot of uh, structures. Like I said, one of the big one is going to be this renal pelvis, which is the end result of a tubing system that is draining the urine away from the kidneys. And so we have these minor calyxes here that start. They go to the major calyx. And then from the major calyx, we're going to go to the renal pelvis. And we'll look at this in a little bit. Um, then we look at these two basic things. This is um, These are two layers of the kidney. I've got a renal medulla and a renal cortex. Anytime you hear these two, you should understand that the medulla means the uh, inner region and the cortex means the outer region, uh, just kind of like the cerebral cortex is the outer layer of gray matter. Um, the renal cortex is the outer part of the kidney. Um, in the renal medulla, we have these repeating structures called renal pyramids. These renal pyramids, um, they almost look like little fishtails as they go through um, in here and I'm trying to draw a couple of them. They're not really the greatest, but these little guys right there are the renal pyramids. Now, in between the renal pyramids, in this little area here and here, are what we call renal columns. This next one right here, these renal columns are simply the areas that are between the renal pyramids. Uh, I'm sorry, I got all this stuff marked up, but hopefully, hopefully that makes Hopefully you can kind of see that. And again, we'll see it more on this pic on some of the pic some of the pictures coming up. Uh, yeah, sorry, the tooth is still bothering me a little bit. Now the next thing is this outer fibrous capsule uh, called the renal capsule. We talked about that just a minute uh, a minute ago. And then finally, we come to the most miraculous kind of little structures in the kidney. They're microscopic, and they are called nephrons. The nephrons are going to be found in the renal cortex, right, the body of them. We're going to have a small portion of them that go into the renal medulla, but the majority of it's in the renal cortex. So this is a picture to look at these. So obviously, it goes from large to medium to microscopic. Uh, so when we take a look at this, uh, we can kind of see on this the renal cortex and the renal medulla. Right? The renal cortex is this little layer here, and then the renal medulla would be this layer. All right? So I could draw, and hopefully it'll, it'll stay fairly straight, but I can draw a little line, and that little line right there is going to be the dividing line between the renal cortex, which is on the outside, and then the renal medulla, which is on the inside. Now, inside the renal medulla, we're going to have these repeating structures. Get this here that um, I talked about just a minute ago that are called pyramids. On these pictures, they really, to me, look like little fishtails. Uh, again, I grew up kind of fishing a lot. But these little structures right here, those are renal pyramids. Again, renal pyramids, here's, a, here's where the word is for, this, for that one. The renal pyramids are inside, uh, are part of the renal medulla. Now, in between the renal uh, pyramids, these little areas of tissue here, and this is going to be where a lot of blood vessels are coming and going, those are what we just learned of as renal columns. 
right? The renal columns are going to be in between, in between there. Now, at the point of each one of these pyramids, all right, going back to the pyramids, and maybe I'll erase some of this here and, and uh, get where I can point to some stuff and get you to see what I'm talking about here. So at the point of each of these little pyramids, I'll start with the three up here at the top. This little area right here that is just at the start of it, all right, I'm going to circle this one even though that wasn't in my little list. Those are what are called minor calyxes. That is the start of the tubing, all right, of the drainage process. Now, as these minor calyxes start working their way out, they will start to join. The areas where they join, all right, these are going to be what are called major calyxes. So every renal pyramid is going to have a minor calyx at the point of it. And then those minor calyxes will work together and kind of join together and form major calyxes. And these major calyxes, as they kind of keep funneling things out, they organize or group all their stuff into this little area right in here, which is called the renal pelvis. All right, the renal pelvis is the last staging area for the urine before it is exited out on this thing called a ureter. All right, so that's the process, and that's some of the structures that we looked at. All right, so um, again, it's going to go through the renal pyramid down here to the minor calyx. Now I'm in the major calyx. The major calyx is going to go into the renal pelvis, and then the renal pelvis is going to go out on the ureter. Now the structure that's making the urine, uh, if we go all the way over here, is this thing called a nephron. This nephron is the microscopic structure, and we're going to look at a bunch of different parts of it. Um, and um, it is pretty miraculous what all it does. There are millions of them in each kidney. Uh, and all this is is looking at the grand scheme of things a little bit closer, showing the renal uh, cortex and the renal pyram or, uh, pyramid or the renal medulla and how these nephrons are organized. Again, same picture, not going to go through it, um, but you might be able to see it a little better. I put it a little larger so you can kind of see as this comes through. Uh, this is the, those red lines are the minor calyx. This red circle would be the major calyx. This large red circle here, and I'll just fill it in. Woo, I got a little crazy with that one, uh, is the renal pelvis. And then from the renal pelvis, the urine goes out on the ureter. Just showing a few other things. We're getting ready to talk about the uh, blood flow into the, um, into the kidneys. Uh, so we have, hopefully you know, this is the abdominal aorta. This is going to be taking oxygenated blood. This is the inferior vena cava that's going to be removing the deoxygenated blood going back to the heart. Um, there is a major artery that leaves um, the aorta called the renal artery taking blood in. We're going to look at how the blood's going to work its way up through those renal columns, get filtered out over here, and then it's going to turn, and I wish I could turn this blue, but it turns blue and comes back out, and the blood is going to leave uh, the kidney on the renal, um, renal vein. I was trying to look to see where it was. Oh, it's not labeled on there that I see. So anyway, but that this right here is the renal vein. All right. So a little bit, uh, that shows a little bit. Again, you should be able to tell this is going to be the right side because the fact that that right kidney is lower. Um, and so we will move on. Now we look at the blood vessels. So I want you to kind of look at this as it goes through. So I'm going to it's a, it's a matched area. So I've got the renal artery coming in, and then I've got the renal vein leaving. I've got the interlobar artery coming in, dividing up, and then it's going to come out on the interlobar vein. The arcuate artery on the one side, and then we're going to have the arcuate vein on the other. We're going to have the cortical radiate artery on the one side, and then the cort cortical radiate artery or vein on the other. All right, so these four and these four are mirror images. All right, so as I go through, and that's not erasing like I thought it would. There we go. As I go through, I want you to remember, all right, so we've got 
these four, it's going from large coming in to smaller, divided more, to divided more, to divided more. I'm going to have a very special little group of things right here. These are all associated with the nephron. All right, so we're going to have the cleaning of the blood there, and then the um, clean blood is going to work its way out on the mirror image of the, of the first four. All right, so we have the radial artery coming in. As the radial artery comes in, it will divide. Now, remember inside the, um, inside the kidney, we had these renal pyramids all decked out throughout it, right? And that's a bad picture, but I'm going to do the best I can. Uh, if I draw this as a kidney, man, that's right. So I've got the um, renal artery coming in, and it's going to divide. And now each one of these little renal uh, pyramids is considered a lobe. So as this renal artery divides, I'm going to have these little branches that are going to go in between the lobes, and they're called interlobar arteries in between the lobes. Now, right here at the, the um, right here at the point of the pyramid, this is going to make a really sharp turn. Right? It arcs. Right? That's where this word comes from. Now it is called the arcuate artery because it has made this little turn right here. And once it gets on top, now we're in the uh, renal uh, cortex, it's going to have a bunch of little arteries that come off that radiate. So we're in the cortex, and these little arteries radiate. And so they are called cortical radiate arteries. All right, so there's no mystery in how they're done. Now we're going to look at uh, these that are going to be in the associated with the cat uh, the um, the nephron in a minute. But I'm going to have a blood vessel coming into this special little capillary called a glomerulus, which is a whole bunch of twisting and turning things. And then I'm going to have one that leaves. Things that are going in are called afferent. So I've got an afferent arterial. Right? This is going to be coming off of these little cortical radiate guys we were just looking at here. And since it's coming in, it is afferent. It's going to leave, and that the one that's leaving is called an efferent arterial. It is going to wrap around the nephron loop and do some crazy stuff we're going to talk about at that a little bit later on, and those are called para tubular capillaries. They're surrounding the tubule. And then it's going to come back and it's going to join and now it's leaving. And so we're back to it's radiating. It's coming in and so now we are talking the cortical radiate vein. The cortical radiate vein then makes this sharp turn to leave. That sharp turn is called an arc so it is called an arcuate vein. As the arcuate vein gets in between the pyramids, we are now in between the lobes, and so it is called the interlobar vein. And then it's going to work its way out, and since we're now leaving the kidney, we are leaving in what's called the renal vein. So I hope that makes sense. It's a pretty logically named air, uh, pattern if you know <laughs> the words. Wow, that looks like a whole bunch of kindergarten scribble. This is the picture that would probably show a little bit more. Uh, this is going to be the uh, cortical and the uh, cortical radiate artery. Once it gets close to the glomerulus here, this is going to be the um, it's going to be called the uh, afferent arterial. It goes in, goes through the. Um, goes through the glomerulus, gets filtered, and then I've got an efferent arterial. And then that efferent arterial, as you see in all of this, you can see there's a little capillary bed that's surrounding everything. That is the paratubular capillary bed. And then it will work its way back out. Now I'm going on this guy, uh, the cortical radiate vein. It goes on the arcuate vein. Now it goes on down to the interlobar artery or a vein it says artery and vein and works its way out 
Now, these little nephrons are really, really amazing. They've got this coil that looks kind of like a little brain on all of these pictures here. Um, what these are are glomerulus, that special little um, capillary bed that's designed to filter the blood. Now, I've got an afferent arterial coming in, and the glomerulus is going to filter it, and a lot of the plasma is going to be pushed out. All right, it's going to be uh, filtered. This will become this that comes out is going to be called filtrate. We'll look at that a little later on. And then the blood that leaves, the blood that, that's been filtered, is going to go out on an efferent arterial. Now understand, over here, remember that uh, the incoming blood in general is going to be about 55% plasma and 45% formed elements, right? Blood, blood cells. That's a terrible, but I don't know how else to do it. Um, most of the plasma here is going to be filtered out. That's what's going through here. So the efferent arterial, understand, is going to be very thick because a lot of the water has been taken out. So it's going to be more like seven... Uh, ooh, ooh, yeah, let me rephrase that. It's going to be more like 30% fluid and 70% formed elements. I don't think that's exactly right, but I just want to show you the percentages. So that is going to be this really thick fluid, and a thick fluid is going to want to draw water to itself. So osmosis, that should give you a clue that osmosis is getting ready to go on in these paratubular capillaries, which are the ones that surround the nephron loop. Now, if you look at this, I've got an afferent arterial and an efferent arterial. You should be able to see a difference in the diameter of these. All right. Now, there's a couple of reasons. One is, just like I said, most of the, the fluid that's coming in here is being separated out into what we call filtrate. And so the volume that's coming in is going to be divided. So the efferent is going to have a lower volume than the afferent. But another thing that's going to happen, because the efferent is, uh, is smaller, it causes a backup, which, which uh, makes for a greater filtration rate because it pushes, it puts pressure in it, right? So the afferent arterial brings the blood in, the glomerulus filters it, the efferent arterial takes the thickened blood out, the paratubular capillary beds are going to surround this thing called a tubule and get, uh, get this regulation going on. Now, this area we just talked about the tubule, that is this area here. And so the paratubular capillary bed, if I was to draw it. So I, that, what I just circled is the, the, tu, the tubule, the, which we'll look at in a little bit. I want to go back this efferent arterial right here. What's going to happen is it's going to go back and it's going to wrap around all of this. It's going to wrap around these guys. Woo, 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 woo. And then it's going to go back up here and wrap around that. And there's going to be this um, give and take between the nephron and the blood vessels. So this goes back to looking at the, uh, the blood vessels in order. Um, again, I'm not going to go over them one by one, but remember, so we have this mirror image. All right? So at this point, we're talking about woo, the nephron. All right? So I've got four steps of blood coming in to get to the nephron, and then I've got four steps of different vessels as blood is going out of the nephron or out of the kidney.